St. Paul, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth, meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our living, loving Redeemer, Jesus. Amen. Amen. How often, after having spent so much time and so much energy on something, giving it all that you've got, have you ended up saying at the end of the day, what in the world was the purpose of that? You've given so much devotion to the company, gone above and beyond, and everybody else seems to be getting all the credit and the recognition and the promotion. Man, what was the point? What was the point? Maybe the bigger question is about life itself. Some people get to the point, the end of the day, the end of their life, they get to the point where they wonder, was this all just a string of accidental events and luck, devoid of any meaning or value? Remember the book that came out by Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life. Remember that? I mean, so many around us, of, of us here, it was some time ago, but so many of us enjoyed it reading that. There was a study that went along with it. Some small groups did that around here. It was a hugely successful book because of this, because Warren was addressing head-on this very real question that so many Christians have. What am I here for? That life isn't just random and fixed but that rather life has great promise and great purpose. See, what ends up happening, if we don't believe that, if we don't buy into that, if we don't trust that, then it's natural for us as human beings to just look for that in other places, to look for meaning, to try to find value somewhere else or in something else. Not bad things in and of themselves. I mean, some are. But our lives become invested, obsessed by things like fun, entertainment, wealth, possessions, reputation, work, school, fame, another person. And the problem is when we then go and place our significance and our worth in those kind of things in something or someone other than Jesus Christ, finding our value and our worth there, it can only possibly lead to a very hollow end every time. Jesus, in Mark 10, our gospel reading, tells us exactly what his purpose is. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Now that phrase, son of man, Jesus is reflecting there on an Old Testament phrase, particularly we get from the prophet Daniel, a phrase that was directed toward the one who would fulfill God's promise of providing a savior, a Messiah, the son of man. In other words, God himself in the flesh. Jesus is pointing to himself here, the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Ransom is a payment. It's a, a payment that buys something back. Is Jesus' purpose, the payment being his blood. So this here gives us just that greatest clue about how to believe that our lives are not futile. The disciples of Jesus, millions of followers since then have come to understand what it is that gives life its greatest purpose and its greatest value and joy in living. And it's all wrapped up, do you notice, in this area of serving, servanthood, 
serving God by serving people. And that's what's meant by Paul in Philippians 2, that we are to have this same mind, this attitude as Jesus, who emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant. So when Jesus says of himself, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and through Paul, we hear to take on the same attitude and heart and spirit as Jesus himself, then it stands to reason that our purpose is in serving. Jesus is saying to us today, align your purpose with my purpose. Jesus is saying, align your will with my will who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Joy, finding the greatest joy in giving of yourself to understand what it means to sacrifice so that others could come to know the one who sacrificed himself for them, for you. So with all that having been said, here's what Jesus will say upon his return to those that he places on his right. Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? Or, or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick and in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. You did it for Jesus. So I don't know where this particular area of service is for you. But recognize here that it's not necessarily caught up in being on some type of a committee or board or some type of a volunteer organization. I mean, it can be, and I'm very thankful that we have a lot of places here where you, where people can plug in and use your gifts and your abilities and your time in service to people loving people and serving God. I love that. But notice here that it's much more about how we live out our lives in the context of where God has placed us within our families, in our places of work, in our social circles, at school, caring about people, particularly in their needs. So what do I, I want to do here in these final moments, and I am wrapping it up already, is simply give you four points or four truths about serving as you think about this in your personal life. Because if serving is Jesus' purpose, then serving is to be our purpose in life too. The first and most important point is so very basic. We've heard it a million times. It has to be said again as very foundational, and it's this. Our service contributes nothing toward our salvation. I'm not, I mean, people get this messed up. I know people who say I'm going to serve there because I need God's forgiveness. We don't serve God in order to get his forgiveness. We don't serve God in order for him to look more favorably upon us. We don't serve God in order for him to answer our prayers the way we would want. This is precisely what's behind Jesus when he says in verse 34, Then the king will come and say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. 
In other words, salvation was a done deal for you before you were even born. Before you even did anything. So we don't serve in order to get brownie points from God. We serve because God served us. Our life of service flows from faith. Very important to get that straight so that we can then hit point number two. Truth number two. When we serve, we are always serving Jesus. No matter who's in front of you, no matter who they are or where you are, to help and to support and to bless someone else, friend or stranger, is to help and to support and to bless and to honor Jesus. In verse 40, he himself says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, here it is, you did it for me. I mean, think about for a minute how that literally changes everything. Changes our motives. So if God's purpose is to continually serve us, our purpose of servanthood is so to completely and constantly flow through us the Holy Spirit working in us as we interact with one another in conversations. How we parent, what people see from us, how we carry ourselves with people who think differently than us, who think differently than you, who look different than you who vote different than you. The words you say, the attitudes you display to be able to recognize and believe that Jesus is literally in that person. Literally in him. In front of you. And that God has placed that person there for you. This is why Paul writes in Colossians 3, whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done. Here we go again. For the Lord and not for men. So truth number two, when we serve, we are always serving Jesus. Truth number three, or point three, it's in this way that service becomes second nature. Second nature. See, if you're like me, you're constantly battling your sinful human nature. I mean, it's, it's, it's laborious, isn't it? Those old habits we talked about last week that are so difficult to overcome, but are. What would happen if you and I recognized and practiced this idea of serving by creating a habit, a habit of displaying an attitude of Christ? on a daily basis. What happened? Waking up every morning, recognizing that it is a day to serve the Lord and love the Lord by serving people and loving people. It just became natural. The people Jesus was talking to when he said, you came to my aid and I was sick, lonely, in prison, and and thirsty, and, and they're like, what? what? Who, what do you, me? When? It was so natural, I didn't even think about it. It was so natural, I didn't even remember it. Seeing Jesus in people, caring about them, coming to their aid was just an automatic reaction for those who had inherited eternal life. Second nature. Last point, truth number four. Service, this kind of service, lasts. It lasts. In other words, what we do on earth for the least of these doesn't just make a difference for the moment. It lasts all the way into eternity. It follows you 
all the way into heaven. It's remembered in heaven. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and thieves can't get at. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what we find here is that investing ourselves, as Jesus invested himself to us in investing ourselves in the lives of people, investing time, is in fact that priceless treasure he's talking about. Beyond anything that earthly treasures or pleasures could begin to offer. Which lasts forever. Things of eternal value. Which is what gives our life purpose and meaning. Your life is not futile. You're created in the image of God. Your life is not futile. And brothers and sisters, God has equipped you for great things. Great things. As you follow in his steps of service. God love you and bless you. All the way to glory. Amen.